CPU liquid cooling has gotten incredibly popular in the recent couple of years and have become almost the standard in most customized computer setups these days. My CPU cooler stopped working a couple days ago, so let's crack it open to see what exactly failed. This will obviously void your warranty, so proceed with caution. First, removing two screws that attach the cover reveal all the electronics that power the motor pump. We'll have a better look at how the pump works once we open it up some more, so let's move on to removing the tubes from the head to make working on this a little easier. These tubes are attached by two more screws that once removed can be easily pulled out. The liquid used in most liquid coolers is usually a mixture of water and ethanol glycol. The reason that the solution is used instead of pure water is to prevent the liquid from freezing, inhibit any bacteria growth, and prevent galvanic corrosion. The little brown particles that you see coming out in the liquid are pieces of debris that really shouldn't be there. This is a red flag that my cooler has probably failed from debris inside clogging up the system. After removing several of their screws from the bottom of the head, we can remove the cold plate. The cold plate is a solid piece of copper that has direct contact with the CPU on one side and several other micro fins on the other side for liquid to flow through. You can see on my unit, a large amount of the debris seen earlier has clogged up this area. Next up is just removing the gasket that holds the copper plate in place. And underneath is another cover for the pump unit itself. After removing both of these, the channel and the impeller can be clearly seen and you should have a good idea on how the liquid flows from one tube, thrusted by the impeller, through the copper micro fins, and outside the other tube. The impeller itself has a magnetic ring around it and is held in place by a plastic rod in the middle that allows it to spin freely when the motor is powered. For a better look at what's going on here, I've moved the impeller onto the other side so you can see both the electronics and the impeller at the same time. There's also one other screw here at the bottom that I imagine was used as the fill port for loading the liquid during assembly and some foam padding to reduce some of the noise during operation. The electronics can also be removed from the head but there's nothing much else of interest to see here. The radiator itself is fairly basic inside. The water flows through the brass or steel channels on one side of the radiator and then flows down outside the other tubes. The eight liquid channels then thermally conduct the heat to the thin fins that are usually made from an aluminum or copper and more expensive unit. So that's a quick breakdown of my CPU liquid cooler. Yours may be a little different depending on the model, but I imagine most will operate in the same fashion. The symptoms of a failing CPU liquid cooler are fairly easy to triage, and on mine were detectable due to the pump head being warm and hot to the touch, but the bottom of the radiator was cold, so I knew there was an issue with liquid flow either a pump failure or just an issue with flow due to debris or an air bubble is a common cause. While closed loop liquid cooling has really changed the PC ecosystem, unfortunately I'm going back to the stock Intel heatsink until I can find a new replacement. But that's for another video, I'll see you in the next one.